you. Welcome to the Livermore Rotary Club in the room that sound is lost in. Uh, Padma, welcome. Could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Wherever the flag is. Here, right behind me. One nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You'll hear more from her in a bit. What rock and tune do we have to, to ring in the new year? Happy New Year, Buenano. Um, what do we have? We've got a banjo, a ukulele, and a guitar. And I just broke my guitar strap, so Joel's going to hold my guitar. By the way, if I didn't introduce myself, I'm Splend, Splendorio, and uh, six more months and I'm, you're done with me. Goud, thought of the day, please come on up. What? You wanna do it from there? You wanna do it from here? You need help? I'm doing without glasses, don't need any more. I can't help you with that. All right, happy new year to all my friends. Okay, my thought of the day is to explore who is a Rotarian. Is that nice? So every one of us have one thing in common. We care, we want to help others in our own ways. That's why we chose to be a Rotarian, a member of Rotary International, and uh, we share the common values and goals of RI. RI provides as the platform and means to achieve the results that we cannot do individually. So in simple terms, Rotarians see beyond what eyes can see while being blind to politics, religion, color of the skin, rich or poor, and where we came from. Rotarians hear farther than what ears can hear. We hear the pain and sufferings beyond family, community, state, or the country. Rotarians imagine solutions. Act by collaborating with everyone. Act with compassion to fight disease, hunger, inequality, enhance education, as well as empower women and poor. Being a Rotarian, you're automatically a global citizen. Now, let's explore global need, needs and the resources and put them in a proper perspective. Imagine that the contents of a cup are the resources needed for a basic living, food, shelter, clothes, taking care of family. And we are fortunate in this country not to have too many people with nearly empty cups, but there are billions of people around the world with nearly empty cup, literally empty cups. Now imagine if we can just give one ounce from our nearly full eight cup, eight ounce cup, 
Imagine it becomes several, several, nearly full cups in many, many countries. So that's the perspective of resources. Now, if you think about the value and the leverage of a small donation to the Rotary Foundation, it's amazing. And a yearly donation of just $100 to the Rotary Foundation, which is less than $2 a week. Can you imagine that $2 can buy a meal for a whole family in many countries? So that's the impact it will have. So we all should be proud being a Rotarian and we have a great impact around the world with what we do. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Gaud. Our frontline meeting people, the most important people we have in our club. Um, oh, we did not have a surprise as greeter. Yeah. Well, our spur reporter is gonna be Tim Barry, double duty, singing, writing, and being our reporter, spur publishers, Don Wentz. Thank you, Don. Our meeting photographer is Irv. Irv's here, I know. I Yep, Irv's here. All right, AV, again, double duty, Don Wentz. Thank you very much, Don. Our Zoom host and chat monitor is Pat Coyle. And Linda Stanford was our greeter. She graciously agreed uh, the other day. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for all the work you do. Let's see, you wanna switch, Don? All right, introduction. All right, do we have, first I'll go on to Zoom. Do we have any visiting uh, Rotarians. Pat? President Splend, I don't see any visiting Rotarians. When you get to guests, we have a couple. Yes, I see that. Thank you very much. We're, I'm excited to meet them. How about in the room? Do we have any visiting Rotarians? Oh. We're going to wake up Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Padma Shari. And we will hear more about her as I introduce her for the main speaker of the meeting a little later in the meeting. Thanks, welcome. All right, yes, let's go back to Zoom. Pat? You're muted, Pat. Uh, we have uh, Rania and uh, Zoltan Zabo, who found us uh, and, and uh, messaged us through Facebook. And so welcome to both of them. They live in Livermore. They're both scientists, and uh, they joined us on Zoom today. All right. You... Thank you very much. Sorry, I had to remove the video because you might see uh, kids in the background. <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. Well, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Rania or Zoltan, you want to tell us a little bit about yourselves? Yes, just, just a moment, please. Okay. Uh, so I'm, um, so we're both uh, scientists from academia. I'm originally a biochemist. Um, we were, we both met in Boston where we worked and then we had a family. So I stopped working. I only work um, by contract from home as a, biomedical editor um, and I'm looking to rejoin full-time the workplace next year when all my children will be in school and Zoltan just a quick introduction there yes hi everybody my name is Zoltan Sabo I was born and raised in Hungary and came to United States in 2009 first to Boston as a scientist in the academia then I transitioned to the industry met with Rania and uh, moved over to the West Coast. And uh, currently I am employed by Thermo Fisher Scientific. I am a senior biopharma application specialist uh, doing mass spectrometry in the biopharma field. Thank you very much. All right, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, we'd love to see you in person. Of course, you can bring your kids if you want. <laughs> oh, you don't. Are you sure? <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, let's uh, in the room here. Yes, Goud, uh, we need a mic. Hold on.
President and fellow Rotarians, I am very pleased to introduce my granddaughter. And uh, she finished her medical school and looking for a residency. <laughs> Nisha Khaled. Hi, Risha. Welcome. Um, any other guests? Risha, come on up. Okay, any, any compromising situations you can describe about your grandfather would be appreciated. You have the rest of the hour. Uh, okay. Good luck. My grandma complains he only started doing dishes after how many years of marriage? 50? Uh, after 50 years of marriage, he started doing dishes last year. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that was great that was great okay don let's move on to the next slide please okay all right um so um one set um you're yeah uh brian may i'll just inform me that um yeah let's yeah i want you to have brian okay uh hey then if how many know that uh, uh, Chuck Hartwig has been uh, ailing for uh, several months, and uh, Chuck Hartwig. He was um, in in emergency last uh, last night. He's uh, probably coming home today, but I thought it would be appropriate that at least we knew about it as a club. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we're, we're, go ahead, Sheila. I was just going to say we're passing around a card. So if you could all please, um, you know, sign the card so we can get it in the mail today. Um, I don't know where it is, but please make sure it gets around to all the tables. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. And um, so if you want to send your own card or drop off, it uh, could maybe Brian let us know what Chuck would appreciate things like that. <laughs> One could never tell with Chuck, but I think yes. All right. <laughs> I think the answer is yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, another announcement. Uh, I don't know, Alan or Ronnie, if you'd like to make this. Uh, Alan, would you like to make it? Please come get the mic or come on up. So Livermore has a warming center that uh, was uh, opened up, and, and Ronnie was an uh, important part of getting that open. And my wife and I have volunteered there a couple mornings. They they need more volunteers. Uh, we volunteer the over, over, uh, the early shift because that's when we're up. <laughs> um, and and I would like to recommend it to all of you because you have a chance to talk to homeless people in a uh, you know relaxed, um, safe environment, and 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 you can learn a lot. And so I not only to help them, but I think you, it will help you. Thank you, Alan. Okay, I have a big announcement, but I want to have a little fun. In the spirit of New Year's, you know, you always hear about people predicting what's going to happen in, the, in, the, in New Year, right? So I have some predictions, and I'm, I'm hoping they come through. My first prediction is that Joel Swanson will learn to eat and shave with his left hand. Oh God, it already came through. And I, uh, okay, I got lucky there. Maybe I just got lucky with that one. Um, another prediction, um, sweater vests are gonna come back into fashion. Stand up, Mike. They did. <laughs> let's see, uh, let's see. Um, you know, uh, there, you know, a lot of you are retired and you're always looking for something to do. Uh, one of you is going to uh, recognize that retirement isn't what they thought and decide to become a lumberjack. Stand up, Mike. <laughs> Excellent. Now, this is, I mean, this is working out. I, I, I'm surprised I'm being so precise here. Um, okay. 
here's the last prediction. Um, this club is going to uh, have a lot of extra dough to play with. A lot of extra money. Not Play-Doh. So we were awarded $25,000 wow. by the County of Alameda as part of the American Recovery Act. We, uh, Herb Ritter uh, initiated it in December, November, December. Um, and um, he told all the clubs in his area to apply. We all decided it was 25 grand each. And we applied and Dave Halbert, our supervisor and Nate Miley, who also represents part of the Tri-Valley, pushed it through, it was approved. The check is sitting on uh, Dave's chiefs of staff desk waiting to be either delivered or mailed. I will, um, well, does anybody wanna to go to Reno and see if we can double it? No. <laughs> if not, I'll give it to Norm. And um, then we're gonna have a discussion on what we do with it. Right, it's there to help the community. Um, so we'll see what we do. But anyway, that's a big. That's the big, big prediction that I know is coming through. All right, uh, next one: birthdays and anniversaries. Deb. No, no, no. Okay. I'll hold it. Okay. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. So we have a few um, birthdays. A couple of them are January 1. Manuel Alvarado, which I don't think he's here. He's one of the new younger guys in the military, I think. Yeah. And Walt Thinfin. Walt here. Okay, then January 6th, Beth Wilson has a birthday. There's Beth. January 8th, Loretta Kasky. Is Loretta here? January 11th, we've got two. Bob Bishop. Bob Bishop and Lance Cavalieri. I, what, did I miss somebody? What were you waving? Who is my grandson's birthday? Oh, hey, hey, Lance on Zoom. Too bad you're not here. <laughs> okay, January 14th, we have Tim Berry. January 18th, we have Carol Howell. I know she's here. There, Carol's back there. January 19th is J.R. Romero. I don't, didn't see J.R. And January 27th, we have Ron Forbes right over here. So happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rotarians. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Oh, and your grandson. Okay, anniversaries. 43 years, Peter Paulson and his wife, Jackie. Peter's not here, that's 43 years. And then we have two that have the same day and they actually happen to be married to each other. <laughs> Kathy and Pat Coyle, happy anniversary. And then 55 years together is Hank Shea. I don't know his wife's name. So no, none of us are here. Well, let's sing happy birth, happy anniversary anyway to them. We'll do something different. What? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just what I had. I said, Can you tell me what's ailing me? He say, yeah, 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 yeah. could be all your good love. Just all your anniversary good love. 
Good love. Really important. Good love. Thank you. That was the, that was great. Thank you. That was great to do the rascals. Excellent, Michael. Excellent. Bring back the rascals anytime you can. God, you're up. You're just monopolizing the stage. Go ahead. All right. Um, I have a detailed description of all the international projects uh, in the newsletter. I'm not going to go read all of that. Um, and basically, we covered about uh, uh, Guatemala, projects in Guatemala, projects in Nepal, and a new one in Uganda, and also the global grant we are working on for the cancer screening for women in, in um, India. Pune. So I'm going to simply summarize here what the needs are, and you can read the details uh, in the newsletter. Ultrasound machine for new medical clinic in Uganda, and uh, Paul is working on it. He already raised $5,000. He needs $3,000 more. So any amount we can give, greatly appreciated. And uh, how to donate is all in the newsletter. If you have any question, ask me, we'll tell you. Uh, cancer screening global grant project. Uh, we, we needed 13,500 uh, to purchase 10,000 DDF. And uh, we already raised 8.5, 8,500. And I'm looking for others from non rotarian friends. Uh, we need 5,000. I'm looking for the help from all of you. Uh, so we can purchase the 10,000 DDF by January 10, approximately. That's when I needed to do. Um, it, it, then next one, I want to give a quick update. The district grant was approved 2022-23, was approved for the girls' garage, uh, a nonprofit design and construction uh, and uh, school. And we use 8,283 DDFs, resulted in 10,354. And uh, the details we'll cover in the next meeting. Okay? Now, the Rotary Foundation. We now I have three new members to help me Pat McMahon, Herb, and Glenn Kubiak. And uh, with the help of Irv and others, we generated individual letters. I know a lot of you don't log in and find out when did you give, how much, all that. So we made it easy. We prepared an individual letters telling you what the recognition level is and when was the last contribution and how much you can do now. And uh, I'm going to be emailing those rather than mailing. I didn't want to get lost in the holidays. So they all will be coming within a few days. Now, quick update. Uh, we set a goal of uh, 66,000 for the annual fund. And uh, we are 64%. We raised about $42,200 already. And for Polio Plus, uh, our, we raised 6,600 at 37%. Our big challenge is to get every Rotarian every year. So, so far I have 44 Rotarians donating and we're going to have a plea letter for the rest of them. At least donate $100. That's going to be the plea. So we can, we can get a prize. We can get uh, award at the district level. We are the large club, one of the large clubs doing a ERUEY. That's a great accomplishment. I'm looking for the help. Thank you. So I'll, I'll, I'll echo uh, Gaud because he he's he has levels of commitment and he is he's strongly committing to meet these goals for our club and he's uh, threatened that he will start knocking on your doors. So the suggestion is you may want to 
quickly do something to hand him a check. All right, thank you very much, God. All right, uh, Bob, you're going to do it, or Debbie, or I know Mike. I'll start. You start. So March 3rd, right here in this room, is our crab feed. We picked this place because of its dynamite acoustics. <laughs> or, or was that dynamite would fix these acoustics? I'm not sure which. So uh, it'll be March 3rd. There's uh, the crab committee is meeting at my house on tomorrow at five o'clock, and we'll be meeting there every week at five o'clock till we're done. You know, till we eat some crab. We're looking for donations for the silent auction. Those are things in the fifty to two hundred dollar range. Then people go around and bid on them. And Diana Geyer is in charge of that, and she's not here today. And Mike is holding up his hand. I'm going to let you go in just a second. And we also know big items, the three, four, five thousand dollar items where we raise our big money with the live auction. So, Mike, I think you might have something to say on that. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, the where we make the money, as Bob has mentioned in the past, is off the auctions. The uh, the ticket prices cover food and the hall and the uh, auctioneer and the band, pretty much. So we really need, and ways you can do this, you all go out to eat a lunch or dinner, I'm sure. You all go to shops and you shop and you have your favorite places, whether they're Livermore, Pleasant or Dublin, doesn't matter. Next time you go and make it in the next two to three weeks, if you would, please, because we need to get these in soon. Just ask the people if they would like to donate to the Livermore Rotary Club's crab feed, which gives back to the community and you can give them any of the examples that you're familiar with. And I think you will find most people will, will help you either with gift cards or two lunches, whatever it may be, or a gift. Uh, and if they happen to say, oh, I already did it, well, thank them very much and go next door. So it's, it's, it's very easy to ask and people, people aren't mind and you know, you be, you're respectful doing that. On the other hand, we need some big items. If you've got a cabin or you've got a nice uh, second home in Santa Barbara or somewhere such, or you would like to put together an interesting dinner. The Royals are staying there right now. It's not available. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, as Glenn, I think a few years ago, put together a very interesting uh, nature walk in the evening through uh, um, Sycamore Grove and a wonderful dinner with some great wines at his house afterwards, which I was fortunate enough to be invited to that one. So things like that, just think, get together with some other Rotarians, and I'm sure you can come up with something because it does make a big difference. We have some good items already. We have a foursome of golf at Wente. We have a foursome of golf at Castlewood. I'm hoping to get one at um, Ruby Hills. But if you, uh, somebody that golfs at um, um, Poppy Ridge, next time you're up there, go ask them. They, they give these out quite, quite readily and get a foursome there. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you very oh, much, Mike. I have a brag. Go, yeah, go ahead. My oldest grandchild, my granddaughter Gentry, got engaged on Christmas Day. So, hey. and I've already maxed out for now. I don't know the meaning of the word maxed out. So if anybody wants to get a table or individual tickets, I do have what? Okay, they're tables for 10. These are probably the tables we're gonna be eating on. Um, so we'd like, if you, if you need to, you don't have to pay me right yet, but if you wanna get your table uh, um, orders or individual orders, let me know. I've got the order forms back here. Yes. If so, if you bring somebody that does not eat crab, we'll give them a chicken. Not a whole chicken, though. But I have a chicken. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, Debbie. Hey, um, 
just to address the, I know we're, we're going to start our speaker here, but uh, the cost, you know, it's 85 if you buy a table or 90, but I, I got to be honest with you, it's just covering the cost of the renting the room, the food. And um, I had to make a, a crab dip for New Year's Eve. And I told my wife, I said, you go, if you're in Safeway, can you get a crab? That crab was 30 bucks. So, I mean, it, it, as I said, shit's expensive, guys. So <laughs> we ain't getting away from it. So, uh, you know, and it's a great time. And, you know, you, you, it's all, remember, it's all you can eat, but you get pasta and salad and bread. And um, so it's, it's a good time. All right. Paul. Oh, come on up. What? Oh, next, yeah, Roland will be in charge next week. Big, big, big deal. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. It's my honor to introduce today uh, Padma Shari. Padma moved to the United States 40 years ago. She started off with an accounting undergraduate degree. And um, from there, went on to delve into programming, marketing, and other classes at UCLA while working at Murphy Hall for the Director of Academic Resources. Her husband moved to Northern California with a teaching position at Santa Clara University. And then he moved on. <laughs> and then he moved on to um, working startups. So Padma stayed uh, as a support to her husband while he pursued his career. She was a stay-at-home mom to raise two kids, but constantly going to school for various certificates while being active in school and other organizations. The travel agent certification helped her get a job as a travel agent. The writing, technical writing certification helped her work with small businesses to set up website and e-commerce sites. Then the real estate license helped her to work as a realtor, all along with her interest in logistics. She has helped manage many conferences, banquets, fundraisers, and other large e events as an event coordinator. Each profession got tagged along with the previous one, so she has worn many different hats professionally while simultaneously volunteering at a few organizations. She has been in the Rotary in the Cupertino Club since 2009. She's a past president and has led several major committees in the club. Currently co-chair of the membership, she's leading the mentor mentorship program. She's the strategic development officer for the club and helping in a few other areas. She's also the recipient of the Vocational Service Award for the club. This year, she is the co-chair of the Vocational Service um, at District 5170. And I would like to mention at this time that um, January is Vocational Services Month, which is part of the reason we were lucky enough to get Padma to speak to us today. While at her club, she's using her vocations and vocational experience she, to help put together trips to see various projects and chaired several events. And those are the activities she's going to be talking to us about today. Please welcome Sherry Padma, or Padma Sherry. Thank you so much, Paul. And thank you all for being here today and listening to me. <laughs> Happy New Year. I just come back from India. I had a big cold, so I sound very nasally. Apologies for that. Um, I am hoping to share about the vocational avenue of service with all of you today, and uh, which, which is the basis of Rotary. And I think it was a great segue today to um, the, the, the introduction, the inspiration was a great segue to what's, what we are hoping to talk about today at this program. Next slide, please. Okay, let me get rid of this thing here so I can see my slide. Okay, anyway, what we like to do today is find out what, what is the name Rotary and how does vocational service fit in with Rotary. And uh, we will come to know about the connection to Rotary. 
what does it mean? But before I begin, I apologize to probably many senior members here because you probably know a lot about this. But we are hoping to rekindle a call with, at the request of our district governor to the, the vocational service aspect in Rotary. So some of us newer members, this, this is a nice, nice way to get introduced back to vocational service at Rotary. And uh, so, uh, and why, why is it an avenue of service? It is an avenue of service because vocational service at Rotary services the members and the community to help build and foster Rotary values in people's lives and workplace. Basically, that's what vocational service is as defined by Rotary. <clears throat> and then we will also find out what some of our clubs are doing and what we could do to, um, to grow the vocational service avenue in each of our clubs. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So uh, different clubs, you know, basically to begin with, the object of Rotary, philosophical statement of Rotary's purpose and responsibilities of Rotarians. So the purpose is to talk about your profession in your workplace, in your club, take time. And that, that is our responsibility according to Rotary, that we share our vocations, we respect every vocation, we dignify every vocation of every member. And as far as the purpose, it is to encourage and foster high ethical standards in our professions, businesses, and to take this out into the community. So basically the idea is we use our vocations, past, present, future, hopeful, to to get out in the community and share Rotary values through what we do and how we, how we exhibit ourselves and what standards we hold ourselves to and others to. So, um, and as a Rotarian, Rotary International says, it's our responsibility to talk about our professions and use our skills to serve the community, help youth, help people better their businesses, their vocations. So over the, over the years, since what, 1905, it seems like vocational service has kind of gotten forgotten because um, people have not been able to talk about their vocations in club meetings or in social settings. Somehow the idea of sharing doesn't seem very, uh, very uh, encouraged, possibly, if that's a good word to use. So the hope is that we start right there. As far as vocational, when, when we talk about community service, we know exactly what we do. <clears throat> we go out in the community and we do a project, we have some funding, we do it. World community service, we have grants, we go work on the grants, we could do projects in the world, we go visit the projects sometimes. And uh, youth service, same thing, you know, there's some funding, we do projects specifically with youth. But when it comes to vocational service, there seems to be a little bit of wondering, what do I do here? How do I, many clubs have expressed that they don't know what to do in vocational service. But this, the basic objectives as, uh, as defined by Rotary International seems very simple that, you know, all we need to do is to share our vocations and through that, grow what you know help others grow help ourselves grow and advance our business commit commitments um, so the the whole idea goes back to how this thing all got started by Paul Harris the four people in a room and they got together only to advance their uh, businesses and professions and while doing that, to build integrity, to build trust, so that others will follow and others will join them. So that's that's the whole idea behind this. So we are trying to go back to the roots of the concept of Rotary and vocational service. And it seems like without vocational service, maybe Rotary wouldn't have been there. You know, the, the idea that Paul Harris had of advancing vocations, everything else has come after. So it started off with vocations. It's very interesting. And um, 
So we will talk a little bit later about how the different clubs use vocational service. Next slide, please. The name Rotary, like I said, you know, we all know it came from Paul Harris and what he decided to do with the four people moving from one place to one prof office to the other and, uh, and helping to build trust amongst themselves and then going and spreading the word of what they do, how they do, and how there is truth, there is fairness, there is integrity, and then people start to believe, people start to uh, go along with it. So I, it didn't, doesn't seem like there was much money involved or sponsorships or anything like that, just, just basic networking. So that, that's the name, Rot we, we all know that that's how the name came about. So uh, it's a way for Rotarians to share occupations and uh, and share about the professions and area of specialty and help if possible. And through this, the hope was to help the community. You know, then once we go out into the community, they know what Rotary is, the community members get excited, get happy to talk to people and get, are eager to engage. So the name and how how we can use it is seems to go back to the roots of the beginnings of Rotary. Next slide, please. So how to promote vocational service in, in your club? So there are lots of, lots of ways we can promote vocational service in our clubs. The first thing, like I said, to begin with, we don't need funding if we, you know, we use our funding in many different ways. So maybe we don't, uh, we don't spend it on something vocational, but the, the way we can do it is to um, engage people of all different ethnicities, have a very diverse profession, people with diverse professions and backgrounds, and recognize the importance of all the skills of people. And uh, so, so the, every club then reflects the vibrancy of the community that is there, you know, brings in all the small business owners. Our district governor often refers to our house help. She's so small business owners, entrepreneurs. She says, everyone is important. And she, she brings up house help and she says, without house help, we'll all be scrambling to do whatever else we wanna do, you know, to do service in the community. So she says, everyone has a place and we need to acknowledge and learn how they came to do what they do and how we can help them grow and how we can grow from their knowledge, from their sharing and expertise. So, um, so we promote, we can promote it by simply having two minutes of talk by a member in at each meeting. You know, this is what I do. I've heard the Oakland Club has a sponsorship program where they pay, I think, $200 or $250 to come up to the podium bragging, but bragging about their profession. And um, Jesse Smith has... Uh, has shared with me that uh, several members joined his fitness studio after he spoke about what it is. So growing business, you know, there's no, uh, there's no harm in talking about it. So if, if we don't have time in our daily schedule, uh, maybe something like a sponsorship might, might be helpful once in two, three months, somebody comes up and talks. It also helps raise funds for the club. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> Some others do socials. Many, many clubs do socials. They just have an evening out at a pub or something. And it's purely for networking. There's no agenda. They just go out there and talk about what you do in your professional life. Or if somebody is retired, what they did, some anecdotes, maybe, you know, um, talk about how things happened or how they see things changing. This will help all the members to kind of learn and grow and and see if maybe they want to change their career and do something else. Uh, so we are doing socials, monthly socials at the district level this year. Um, every fourth Thursday of the month, 7 to 8 p.m. Many of you probably have received my emails. So we are trying to spotlight two, two uh, members from one of our 63 clubs to talk about their profession and uh, share slides and how did they get there? What do they hope to do? So the last, uh, the last week, well, uh, 
last month was um, Jesse talking about the fitness studio and how you can make a new year resolution <laughs> and a baker from the Los Gatos club. She does some amazing cho chocolate and uh, baking and she has, she gives lessons. So this might be something like a fundraiser. You use her, uh, her tea lessons to, you know, have some people sign up for classes and make some money for the club too and help her grow her business. So, um, so the, the whole idea is advancing ethical standards in the workplace through what we do and our vocations. Next slide, please. So as more members share their information, we can, we can grow our membership. You know, um, vocational service and club service are very closely involved. We never think about it. But uh, when you think of vocational service, you have members, you know, maybe educators, uh, maybe somebody in the construction business, and others come to know that, hey, there's somebody there that is doing the same thing I do. Let me join the club. We, we can talk, we can discuss things, we can advance our uh, careers. Or you, we take our expertise, if we are retired, semi-retired, we take our expertise and go out to schools or, uh, uh, you know, a workshop to teach youngsters about what they can do, how, how, how they can grow their stuff. So there's lots and lots of different opportunities as members start sharing. You know, when I shared that I am a travel agent, uh, my classification, I think at some point, uh, every club was allowed to have only one member uh, with a specific classification. So I got travel travel agency in our club of 200 people. I'm very excited. When people came to know that I do this, people approached me and said, can you help us plan this travel or that travel? Until they knew that, nobody was coming to me for it because they had no idea what I do or what I could help with. So um, we can... So we, as we, as more and more members share the information within the clubs and in the district, we are able to make little groupings of people with similar interests or people who want to who want to learn something new, who want to grow. And uh, this way, membership will grow. And um, club service brings speakers, I think. And if we bring speakers from different areas, the the vibrancy of the club is going to improve and more members will join so this the whole thing is a beautiful effect you know we start with vocational service just talking about who we are what we do and then it helps bring in membership it helps club service it helps and then it goes around so again all this doesn't need much money but if we do have money <laughs> next slide please if we do have money there's lots of different things we can do you know, we can go out and do projects. At Cupertino, we have um, we have uh, we have funding, but for several years we were wondering what are we going to do with this money. You know, we have this money. We were trying to do garden boxes. We were trying to do this and that. But then it was kind of like, does it belong in youth? Does it belong in community service? Does it belong in vocational service? So we have seriously started now. Um, maybe don't tell anybody, maybe we give up some of our funding, give it back to the, to CREF, but <laughs> we've started going out to West Valley and, uh, offering services, our educators are offering services in resume writing, helping interview, you know, adults. So, so this doesn't take any money. This just takes some time and coordination between people. We go out to De Anza college and help with English learning uh, as a second language. We just connect individually once a month, once a week, and talk to people and help them out with what they want to do. We've gone out to the jails and helped uh, women get their uh, high school diplomas. So there are lots of different ways we can use our vocational services, our expertise, to help in the community, to grow the community. And then through our partnerships with the nonprofits, we get some projects too that, you know, we get to work with them. And this way, our awareness of Rotary is coming around really well. Next slide, please. So now we say, then what? What are we going to do after this, right? Um, it, it's just a matter of thinking differently 
not feeling the pressure because vocational service is something that's going to continue year after year. It doesn't matter the leadership change or the rotary year change because this is all about just, you know, you have 90 members, 45 of them share this year, 45 more will share next year. So there is no time limit on how we can get to know our members and 4,000 plus members in the district, we could get to know a lot of them and we're all here to stay, right? So, so for a long time. So this really, really works to build these relationships and build this thing without pressure, without feeling like something has to be done by June 30th, you know, otherwise we lose funding or something will happen. And so um, I think the idea is to just get to a place where we can, uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to take away the chat, but anyway. Um, anyhow, so just, just remembering how we started, what Rotary was meant to be for us members and what we were, what our responsibility is going forward. Next slide, please. And so with that, um, I think we all know vocational service or most clubs know vocational service. I've spoken to many presidents and many of them said, we don't have the capacity to assign a chair and for that chair to get a committee and, that, and then for them to go out and try to find projects to do. So this way of sharing during a club meeting is very simple. It's a little bit more work on the president, sorry, but, you know, to schedule somebody to, to call on someone to come and share and then make sure the person comes and shares, but it can grow very organically, very, very beautifully. So at the district, this was the request of our district governor this year is to spread the word about vocational service and that it is something that's very basic, very simple, very easy, and a fun thing to be part of. Every member can be a part of the vocational committee in every club and at the district. So she wanted us to see what we could do to help um, everybody participate. So next slide, please. We have gone on to... Um, uh, build out or complete the building of a LinkedIn page for our district. It's on our district website. So there is a LinkedIn page that every member is welcome to please go and join so that you can meet the other members in our district. It's not just our club. It's not just one small or large club. It's all the members in the district. It's open. You can, then you can start to have conversations with all these people. We have 85 members who have joined already. We are very, very excited about this because I can go through there and say, do I want some advice on something? Let me call this person. And uh, it's, it's very simple, very easy, nice way to connect and interact. So we've done that. And the other is... Um, like I am here. Thank you so much, Paul. We are happy to come and share more. This is the first one I've done this year. So apologies if it's not perfect. We will work on it to make it better. Um, attend the monthly social. It's a Zoom. It's a Zoom meeting. So you, you're most welcome to just log in and listen. And then you can share whatever thoughts you have. It's one hour. We have two speakers, about 15 minutes each. And the rest of the time is Q&A and whatever we can do. Um, and then... Um, Anybody can identify a speaker in their area of interest, you know, or you, I'm, I might be a realtor, but I might like to know about construction. So I say, hey, can we have this person as a speaker? Because I want to know more about construction. Maybe I want to do something to my home. Then I go to this person later <laughs> and get their help to do the work in my home. Next slide, please. So this is what the LinkedIn page looks like. It is, when we go to the district website, a little bit farther down the page on the left-hand side is vocational service. Um, Arlie Marley has done a great job of putting a little box for each avenue of service. So you, you go to vocational service and you click on the flyer and it brings you here and you can just go sign into LinkedIn. And then you get connected to whoever is there. Next, please. And uh, the, so these are the socials. It looks something like this when the email comes into your inbox. I am trying to send it to the vocational committee chairs of the clubs that I have 
Otherwise, I apologize. I am sending it to the presidents to hopefully share with their members. Next slide. This is our information. Shannon and I are happy to help in any which way we can. Um, this year has been a little different from prior years, I believe. So we hope to grow it from here. Next slide. So please attend, please send your feedback. Sorry, I've gone five minutes over, I think, but thank you all so much for listening. All right, thank you very much, Pat. Um, so let's start, are there um, any questions in Zoom land? I don't see any hands raised. Nor do I, Splin. Okay. And I'm, if Christian is still on, I can't believe Christian does not have a question. <laughs> Go away for Christian. All right. How about in the room? Any questions? Bob? On the LinkedIn um, page for 5170. Right. We click the button that says request to join. Yes. And then somebody reviews that. Do they know we're Rotarians? There's nowhere to put a note saying I'm part of this club or how, are, how does this process work? Um, Shannon and I do go in there and take a look. So you'll see if me. If we have, if we are, no, I mean, it's it goes back to right. We are all truthful, fair, integrity. So, but uh, yeah, no, it, it's this is only available to members to click. So, but it, you're right. I think that's something we need to correct where we can add which club we are from. Thank you for that. I will make sure to okay. uh, have them add that. Yeah, it's it's important. <clears throat> Padma, I enjoyed your talk. Uh, you. I was also intrigued by um, helping uh, people in jail in prisons with getting an education and getting a high school diploma. How did that happen? So maybe I can share with you offline how, how our club has done Very it. Good. Yeah, they've gone through the school district, gone through the school district, adult adult education district and and uh, reached out to them so we have a little bit of funding for that but mostly it's other stuff i think help they give but you know so many clubs do it in so many different ways right maybe they don't call it vocational service but uh, maybe it is time to call it vocational service because we are using our vocations to do what we do uh, if it's not specifically youth or club, but even if it is kind of foraying into the other avenues of service, it doesn't matter. We're all in this together. It's the same. It's the same club. It's the same idea. The same values. Um, but uh, I think it helps to have a vocational committee, or so, so so that they can take the load off the president a little bit, in in getting people to talk about or organizing socials or you know, made, setting up workshops. I know your club does several of these. And so having a vocational committee chair helps and a committee, yeah. Check on Zoom again, anybody? No, a lot of people on Zoom. I have a brag. Say it again. I have a, I have a brag. Can I brag? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> hold on, Christian. <laughs> Let's finish the program and then we'll get to you. All right, any other <laughs> questions in the room? All right, thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much. Okay, Christian, you have a brag? Uh, yes. Uh, last um, weekend, I watched the, uh, my kids and I, we watched the uh, Passion of Christ movie. It was kind of heavy for them because I have a, almost a 20 year old, uh, 17 and 15, it was kind of heavy. However, this morning, uh, two of my daughters were actually going more deeper, I mean, kind of deeper into their Bibles. So I was so pleased and intrigued by what Giovanna asked me this morning about Bible verses. So anyway, uh, I'm just so thankful that it has some kind of impact on these kids and hopefully they're on the right path. So I would love to donate a hundred dollars to the additional project. So sorry, sorry, to the music scholarship. All right. Thank you very much, Christian. And happy new year. 
Thank and you so much. I know we did not forget your birthday. We know why you're named Christian. <laughs> I was born when people are broke on Christmas day, Christmas day. I know, we know. Yeah, but it, it <laughs> well, we know when you were born. We got it. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else on Zoom or in the room for the good of the group? Kelly Bowers, we need a mic for you. So thanks for the inspirational talk. It just inspired me to do something. I just created it while we're here. It's a little spreadsheet and you put your name in it if you're a Rotarian from our club and you put in your field or your vocation, your career, even if it's past. And then I have a column you can put mentor, network, interview, job shadow, intern or other and just put a yes or no and we can send it later. But what I wanted to do is then post on our LinkedIn and our Facebooks and stuff something that just has the breadth of all of our careers. Like what club has people who do all of these things and just kind of spur some talk and interest? Because I don't think people know the wealth of experience and expertise and careers that are all here. Most clubs are like limited. It's like all the doctors or all the lawyers. So just an idea. If you want to do it here, you can do it here. Otherwise, I'll send it through email. Thank you, Kelly. All right. We are adjourned.